What's up guys, I'm Deathy for Nox Gaming and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to make the sword builds for beginners and yep, this one I'm using is kind of mid-tier build although it's not using any legendary or any catalyst but later I'm going to show you a much more simpler bit that you can use that you can farm easily from the normal behemoths from lower levels so we're going to focus on this one first pick out the molten orbs and try to complete the combos to regenerate your failure and the special meter alright, let's dash in Behemoth is slowing down. Easy. Let's just keep completing the combos. I am going to pick up that later. Let's interrupt this guy. He's not rolling back. Well. Alright, that's our special meter charged. We're going to activate it and you're going to see how the meter keeps going down but it keeps regenerating back up. That's how good this wheel is. And there's still this one special effect from this weapon right here that I'm going to explain later in the build which is actually very good with this condition right here so let's just keep hitting this guy it's going to get enriched soon that's half HP and I'm not out of my special yet although I might run out of special soon because I cannot hit this guy alright pretty easy part breaks dash in again right, I'm out of special but let's regenerate it fast although I don't think I need one to kill this guy yep I don't need one to kill this guy as you can see this build is actually pretty fun to use because you don't really need much effort to kill a behemoth but it's a blaze behemoth and it's a mid tier build so I'm going to show you how a simple build will be and I'm going to summon the supply crate so that I can change my build in the middle of explanation yep let's go through the build so here's the build guys and since this is a beginner build or a simple build I'm not going to use any legendary stuff or any catalyst but I did use one Lady Luck stuff right here since it's a mid-tier build because we are using Hellion right here which is available on level 15 and the Stormclaw which is available from level 14 I'm going to show you another build that is using a much slim simpler one but I'm going to explain this one first the key player to this build is of course the weapon to continually generate Frost Sprite while you're using your special and the Energist right here to increase your weapon charge rate which means you're going to be able to regenerate your special meter faster when you complete a combo and that also works while you're under a special it will keep regenerating your special while it keeps decreasing which means you're going to be able to keep your special for the whole battle which also means you're going to be able to generate frost sprites to add 60 damage maximum frost sprite which means 240 damage for the whole battle so that's actually pretty good and those are the key players she's a part summary cunning 10 percent critical strike chance that's the only critical strike chance you have but that is actually pretty good Be because even if it's only 10 percent being able to critically strike might change the battle by a lot and to increase your critical strike damage as well and there's molten right here to increase your attack speed by 15 percent and immunity to burning the only source of attack speed that we have here is from the molten and from the special of the sword failing overdrive or avenging overdrive both will give you 20 percent attack speed Combined with Molten 15%, that's 35%, it's more than enough. And that is Tenacious and Tough and Iceborne to help a lot with your max HP and damage based on your current HP. Tough and Tenacious will give you 1.7k max HP and Tenacious will give you 2% damage bonus for every 1 on HP which means it's 34% damage bonus. Conditioning comes with the weapon so you cannot change that one. And Knockout King so that you can stagger the Behemoth pretty easily. So that's also the perk summary, let's go through the build. The Stormclaw with Cunning the Halion with Cunning, the Halion with Tenacious, and Ganasha with Knockout King. I'm using Pangas Shrine because we might be able to knock the Behemoth down easily, but you can always switch it to anything else you want and fit in Energize. As for the Omni Cell, you can always switch it to anything else you want to, but fit in the Iceborne. Um, there is Owners of Burius with Tenacious and Tough, Fairy Overdrive, and Dynamic Black Card. This is the one that I bring from the Lady Luck. Now I'm going to show you the other build, which is a much more simpler one. So here's the other version of the build, we don't have the Hellion, we don't have the Stormclaw, the only one that is pretty high level is the Pangar which is available at level 7, but I guess that's fine because level 7 is pretty doable for beginners. And there is this Fiery Breastplate which, which is still at tier 1, I have not upgraded this one, but I, I guess it will make do. So we are going to go through the perk summary, the Knockout King and Overpower, these two are a very good combo because you are going to be able to knock the Behemoth down pretty frequently and you gain bonus damage when the behemoth is staggered and if you notice the weapon the omni cell and the lantern all these three are frost elemented frost attribute so you will be able to slow down the behemoths pretty frequently maybe two to three times in a single battle so you'll be able to utilize the overpower even more with this kind of build and then there's tenacious tough and iceborne as well as i've mentioned in the previous build description 
this is to help with your max HP and damage based on your current HP. And if it's Fury is at plus 4 because it's not upgraded as I've mentioned before. Conditioning comes with the weapon and energize. Yep, this will be enough to be able to keep your special up most of the time. So you're going to see how it works in the next battle. So that sums up the perk summary. Now let's go through the build again. The Pungar with Overpower. The Ember Main with Evasive Fury. And the Pungar again with Tough. And Charok with Overpower. I'm using the Pungar Shrine. And as always, you can always switch it to anything else you want to. But I'm going to prefer Pungar Shrine with Energized. And the Iceborne, you can always switch it to anything else you want to. But I will prefer Iceborne. And here's the weapon. Everything else is the same. Except the mod is recurse difficult. So this one will help a lot with the failure regeneration. And you're going to see why it is very good. Because it will help a lot with to cover up with the lack of energize. So that's the build, guys. Alright, so let's continue our battle to another behemoth. We fought a Bliss behemoth just now with the first build. And this simpler build right here, I think I'm going to fight another Bliss behemoth with it. And there's that chariot right there, and I hear a chest. So I'm going to take that chest. And from the previous battle, we have our special ready. So we're going to fight this one with our special. But I guess we'll start by regenerating the failure by landing some hits in. Alright, so let's start with heavy attack. And light attack. It's going to start by spewing my balls, so if it threw that one from the head, easy. And let's start hitting again to regenerate our failure. Alright, it gets slowed down, it's gonna get staggered soon. Watch out for that magma balls. Stagger, activate special and hide behind it so that we don't get hit by the magma balls. Keep hitting it, it's slowed down, our overpower is gonna be very nice because it's gonna stay staggered for a while longer. And as you can see, the special meter keeps regenerating back up, and our fellow keeps regenerating back up too. And it's very good. That's why I like this build a lot. That's 20% attack speed bonus for almost for a whole battle. And yep, let's keep hitting it. That's another part break. And it's a fourth HP left. It's going to get staggered soon, or second time. Alright, evade through that one. Alright, I'm out of special. But I guess that's fine. It's gonna die soon, I guess. Alright, let's keep hitting it. Just to land some hits into that, it dies, yep, easy. So that's the Blaze Behemoth, pretty easy, huh? And the special uptime is almost for the whole battle, so yep, that's what. That's why I like Sword Build with Energized. And I guess I want to fight the Nizaga, but the Dross is closer, both are around the same level. But I guess, guess what, I'm just going to fight both. So we're going to start with this Dross right here, should be pretty easy. Start with a dash in and a combo. Kaboom. That's our special ready. So we're going to regenerate a bit of failure, evade through that one, and we're going to activate our special. Smack that hat. Easy. Alright, it's gonna get slowed down soon because it got hit by the Pangar. Yep, easy. It got hit by a Pangar and by our special, which means it's going to get slowed down pretty fast. Alright, it's gonna get enraged. Let's break apart so that the enraged will be cancelled. Alright. I don't think we can do this, so let's dash out a bit. And dash back in. Uh, okay, there we go. Let's keep hitting it. It's gonna get staggered again. Easy. The first initial freeze is not done yet. Now the freeze is undone. But I guess it's gonna die soon. Let's just keep hitting it. I thought it's gonna die from that one combo, but I guess not. Yep, it's dead. Let's stack up our special so that we can get our special on the next battle. And let's rush to that Nizaga right there. So this Nizaga has just got updated. The contact point for the head and for other parts maybe. It has been increased so it will be easier to break parts or target the head. Which means you're going to be able to stagger the Nizaga easier now. We gotta thank the developers for this because Nizaga has been pretty hard to stagger because of its low head contact point. So we're going to start with a dash in. It's going to start spinning with the Thunderbolt. So if it through that one, it's gonna be dangerous. Then it's going to start with two ramps. That's the first ram, and the second ram you can stop it with the Iceborne easily. There we go, activate the special, and it should be frozen, yep, easy. That's the stagger. We're gonna do the explosion kind of thing. Keep hitting it, regenerate your failure again. Yep, as you can see the special meter just got back up. Easy, it's gonna get enraged. We're gonna evade through this one, maybe not the part breaks. Let's keep hitting it. Alright, let's see it through this one. Easy. We're gonna hit the tail and let's not let it do anything stupid and it's that Pretty easy, huh? So that's the build. You can activate your special for the whole battle and you gain extra damage from this price that you see for floating little orbs. These 
each orb increases your damage by 60 and that's a lot so four orbs means 240 extra damage and yep it regenerates for the whole duration of a special and a special stays for the whole battle it's just complete so that's the build guys i hope you guys enjoy it please don't forget to like and subscribe it's free and you can always subscribe thank you for watching i'll see you guys in the next video